Hey everyone, how are you going? I'm here today with a video that I've touched base on before, like a long time ago. And the video was called, this is what, um, what was it called? This is who I am pretty much. What a lame name. But anyway, that video got some really good hits and a lot of people wrote some amazing, amazing comments. So today I just wanted to do a video talking about epidermolysis bullosa, EB, the condition that I suffer and a million other people have it as well, but not many are on YouTube, but I'm, yeah, I think I'm the only beauty guru that's got EB and is on YouTube. But anyway, um, I just want to talk about the condition and how it affects my life and how if someone has a baby and it's born with EB, um, how they should, um, how they should handle, like, how their emotions, I know, I don't know their emotions, but, I don't know, I just want to guide them through how, like, to make them feel better in themselves, to give them confidence, and that their little baby is going to be fine. I know I'm not a, I'm not a miracle worker, by no means am I coming on here saying, Everything will be fine with your baby, but yeah, I I started this YouTube channel to pretty much talk about to inspire other people with ED to um to feel more confident about themselves because I'm putting myself out there on YouTube. I want other people with ED to feel more confident and inspired to go and do whatever they whatever their ambition may be to go out and do. So that's the main reason I started my YouTube channel and I've made that many videos that are non-EB related and are, uh, but they are still inspiring if you know what I mean. I hope they are, I don't know, but yeah. So I was going to talk about that and yeah, all that stuff, that's so exciting. Okay, so let's get started and hopefully this video will be a little bit more formal and more productive than my other one that I made. But that sure did inspire a lot of people and hopefully this one will too, but we'll see. Okay, so first of all, the condition that I suffer from is called epidermolysis bullosa. Yes, that is a huge long name, I know that. And yes, I know how to spell it. <laughs> um, there are so many different forms of EB. Um, going from severe to not very severe, 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 I don't know how to talk. Um, so I have one of the most severe cases of EB. EB is for short, for epidermolysis bullosa, by the way. Um, so I have one of the severe, so I can't say that freaking word properly. Anyway, um... Yeah, I have one of the most severe forms of epidermolysis bullosa, like I just said a million times. And the way EB works is, yeah, is there is a few, there's three layers of skin. There's the epi, there's a, there's a glue, and then there's a dermis, I think. Don't count, I don't know if it's back to front, or I'm not a Scientologist professor or anything like that. But in between that layer of skin, there's a glue. And that glue that locks the skin together is completely missing out of the genes that are built into my genetic, you know, that thingo, the, I can't even think of the word, oh my god. But that gene is completely missing and I haven't got the glue that glues my skin together. So pretty much my skin is fragile like a butterfly's wing. As you can see in the background, there's a butterfly. I don't know if you can see another one. Oh, there's two butterflies. <laughs> so, um, yeah. We're also known as, um, I'm going to sneeze. Just excuse me for a moment. Okay, so, excuse me. I just sneeze, like, no tomorrow. Um, yeah, so, our people with EB are classified as EB children, butterfly children, whatever. Um, because our skin is just pretty much as fragile as a butterfly's wing. If you grab hold of a butterfly's wing, it will pretty much slide off and 
care. And that's pretty much what EB is like. Um, so to deal with EB, you have to be bandaged, like, to protect yourself. If you have wounds, open wounds, you need to protect these wounds and heal these wounds. If you don't heal these wounds, they're going to become infected. They won't heal. They'll just become a horrible mess on your body and you'll look disgusting. And excuse me, I just sniffed. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, so the medicine, there is no cure for EB, by the way. EB is pretty much non-curable right now. There is a um, thing going on in America where they're doing the bone marrow or something or other. I don't know. But it's pretty deadly, apparently, and a lot of people have come through the other side having it done, and some people haven't, um, and some people have been cured from EB altogether. But in Australia right now, there is no cure for epidermolysis bullosa, which is pretty sad. In this day and age, you would think there would be something, but they are doing different treatments here and there, like therapies, skin therapies here and there. Um, but other than that, on daily care is needed like to address different wounds that need to be healed properly. Um, yeah, every single wound is different on your body. If you might have a wound up, like I've got this wound here. Oh my god, my nose is killing me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like this one up on my shoulder. I have so much trouble with my shoulder. I never used to. It used to be absolutely fine. But for some unknown reason, it just won't heal. I've had so many testing, like skin cell therapies. So also, um, infection is a huge, huge problem for people with EB. I always get an infection no matter what, where I am, whenever. I always have infection. So Regular antibiotics is a key must. Like, you have, it's horrible, but I've been on antibiotics for like ages. But my body becomes immune to it, so I have to go off it for a long period, for a little while, then go back on it. Then, so, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, antibiotics is one of the worst medicines in the world that kills your teeth because it's full of sugar, and I hate it. So, um, also, EB affects the inside as well as the outside. So I get constant, constant blisters in my throat. Like, not to the extreme where it's really bad, where I can't swallow, but I used to when I was little. Um, I get blisters inside my mouth quite regularly. Um, I've actually had one today, but I'm fine. Um, there's extremes, like I can get a really bad one. I can't open my mouth or put liquid into my mouth at all. And there's also periods where I um, can't eat for a whole day because, or put anything in my mouth because I have this gland on the side of my cheek like here and it swells up and it sets a nerve off inside my stomach and I'm no good for the rest of the day. I could die. But, um, so yeah, infection is the biggest thing of life and the skin is so fragile on the inside and outside. Like... When I had my SCC cut off, um, SCC is like a EB skin cancer. It's quite deadly, but I've had my first one removed last year and it was quite the experience, I must say. But I'm fine now, but you just always have to check, have to have skin checks every three months by a professor in Sydney. And um, yeah, I found my first one and it was pretty scary, but... Um, they got it all and I'm fine now. Um, what else? Um, yeah, so the skin just like breaks down so regularly. That's how skin cancers start. So when I had my skin cancer cut off my back, I wasn't incubated because sticking a tube down my throat is one of the worst things you could do to a person with EB. Like, I've had an experience where they stuck the tube down my throat to incubate me and they've ripped all the skin off my throat all the way down inside. And I could not swallow my own saliva for like 
probably two months and that's when I had a gastrostomy tube placed but I've had that removed um so yeah it's a pretty big experience in my life so um yeah so like I said never be incubated if it's the last thing that needs to be done go for it but as a last like as that do it as a last resort like don't go and wreck something that's working perfectly fine um also with blistering in the throat there become strictures in the throat so where your throat closes up to the, like two millimeters not even that I've never had this happen but it's happened to a lot of people with EB um where they've had to have their di a dilation done in their throat so what happens is it's done under anesthetic they put this balloon deflated balloon down to the throat and it's all done under radiology I think or something like x-ray like and they put this balloon down the throat and it's deflated as I said and they push it up they like push air or the fluid into the dilation thing which is into the throat and expands the throat to a proper I don't know what the proper millimeter how big your throat's meant to be but to the proper standard that's good for swallowing your own saliva because a lot of my friends have this trouble and a lot of them refuse to have it because it can be pretty bad apparently and touch wood I've never had to have this happen to me so I'm pretty happy about that but along with EB, teeth is one of the worst things that God ever gave an EB person because they are nothing but a pain in the ass. Excuse me again. Brushing the teeth is so traumatic for me. It causes blisters. It um, makes my gums bleed. No matter what sort of toothbrush I use, it still kills my gums and I hate it. absolutely hate it with a passion. And I've had a number of teeth pulled out. My teeth are by far the most horriblest teeth in the whole entire Southern Hemisphere. But hey, get over it. If you have something bad to say about my teeth, don't come here. But anyway, oh my God, I'm going to die today from this cold. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much all like, I want to touch base on. I also had a gastrostomy tube placed when I was like, nine ten years old and that was the worst thing that I've ever done to myself my dad has ever done to me I um it leaked constantly 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 and then when I had it removed it still leaked because the hole wouldn't close up and I had to go back in the theater after like a year of it leaking through this open hole from stuffing it with this I could never eat a proper meal because it would just like pour out it was just it's disgusting even when you stuff this stuff in it like it was stuffing and it was disgusting that's all I can say so G tubes aren't for everyone and I know some people that swear by them but in my book I hate them I cannot stand them um, um underweight is also another thing that affects people with EB I've just put on two kilos in a year and a half. And I'm, my dietitian is so proud of me. The only thing that she's not proud of me about, of me about, of me about uh, is my vitamin intake. I hate vitamins. They just taste like poo. And vitamins, I'm lacking in vitamins. I have to have numerous blood transfusions, iron transfusions because of the... You're losing blood constantly out of the wounds if they're bleeding constantly and you just become tired and lethargic. So I have to have those every now and again. Not very often, but yeah, that's pretty much the, num like the number one things that happens with people with ED. So yeah, um, moving on, I think. <laughs> okay, so I've, like I said, I've had so many things done on my shoulder that just aren't really working and have periods where I can go for days and days with it being really good and then all of a sudden it won't stop bleeding, it won't stop seeping, it won't, I hate that word, but anyway, it just won't get better. At 
the moment, touch wood, I'm going through a good period with this wound. But everyone has bad days with their wounds that just won't heal. You get fed up with these wounds and it drives you insane. Like some areas I don't need dressings, but I wear them because protection and people with EB bump themselves like every day wear and tear. Putting your clothes on, you can hurt yourself, like rip skin off. Going to the bathroom, you can rip skin off. Like turning the taps on is completely impossible with them turny ones. That's out of my league. I cannot turn the tap on. Um, walking everywhere. Like I know myself, I know I'm totally different than most people, but myself, I... um. I go out with my friends and I go to the pubs and seriously, I wreck my feet something shocking. Like, I hurt my feet, but it's worth the pain. Like, you go out to have fun and you hurt your feet, but it's still, it's fun as. So, dressings, I put dressings on my feet to protect this from happening, from getting blisters, from people might step on me, you know. Um, I might fall over, I've never fallen over by the way. Um, but yeah, just protection. That's another reason dressings are really important. A lot of dressings that are just on me because I don't want to get hurt. I like the protection. I like to be comfortable when I'm sitting down or anything, just like that. But it does get hot. Like where I live is like really, really hot during summer and it affects my skin shockingly I hate it like I get really dry for no reason and I swell up in the afternoons like my skin gets really tight and yeah I hate it but I stay in my aircon I have an aircon in my room the only aircon in the whole entire house which is pretty lame but it's still awesome and yeah so that's how I pretty much cope with the heat here. Um, I don't go out of my room, but when I do, if I want to go over town or something, I get in my, I have an electric wheelchair. Now, this is something that is very needed for when you're got EB and you want to be independent. Like, I don't use my wheelchair when I go out. Like, it's like my car. So where I live, I live like near the club and that's where my dad works, but anyway, I get in my wheelchair, it's an electric motorised wheelchair, and I drive this to the club, and I get out of it, I walk around, and then we want to go, when we want to go to the pubs, we get a taxi, and I don't use my wheelchair at all. But, if you want to be really independent, and if you want to go, like, down the street with your friends, and if it's a long walk and stuff, seriously, you need an electric wheelchair. It's so awesome, and I love it. When I first got my electric wheelchair I was like oh yeah this is awesome but I don't really like it I really want to get my driver's license and stuff but my dad's really against that stuff but yeah anyways um so coping with EB coping is with EB is like really hard like some days you just want to lay down in a hole and die like throw some sand on me and just leave me alone some days you just don't want to get out of bed and you don't want to face the world of dressing change time and all that stuff. Dressing change time would have to be one of the worst, worst times of my day. I hate it. I absolutely hate it with a passion and I wish it never existed. I wish I could just like switch off when it's happening and switch back on when it's all done. But you can't. Some days I cry in agony because it's so painful and it's getting worse as I get older and it's quite traumatic. Like, I don't take any pain medicines when I should. Like, I totally should take pain medicines. But I don't want to become reliant on pain medicines and it just isn't my cup of tea. Unless I'm in, like, severe. Like, when I had my back operation, when I had my cancer removed, I had to have pain medicine because I couldn't move. But I can move with this pain and yeah. So dressing change takes forever and I hate it. It's probably like two hours, sometimes three. And it's from top to toe and it's not cool. That's all I can say. 
Um, but coping with it is just like you have to keep moving on. If you don't move on, you're the most depressed person in the whole entire world. Like, I fall back on things that I like. Think about if you have EB and you want to do something really exciting after dressing change. So if you want to do, you have dressing change and you have something to look forward to straight after it, whatever it may be, a DVD, a YouTube video, a shopping event, um, coffee with a friend, going out to have a drink with someone, whatever, putting makeup on. I look forward to putting my makeup on straight after my dressing change because it makes me feel beautiful and without my makeup, I would be like so depressed. What makes me, keeps me going and inspires me is my makeup and my YouTube. That's pretty much it. Like, I love makeup events like International Makeup Trade Show. I love YouTube beauty gurus. And I love technology. I love, like, Apple iPads. I love, like, iPhones, cases, anything, like, electronic all that stuff. I absolutely love it and that's what keeps me going. And recently another thing that keeps me going is like YouTube. Um, I have itchy nose now. And a YouTube friend, like a subscriber, contacted me recently saying that they had a little baby that was just born and they wanted to know how they could see me on YouTube really like put inspiration into them showing them that everything will be okay if I can grow up to be like I inspire them to hopefully one day that their little girl will be like me and that really like when she said that I was like I just wanted to cry like this little girl is going to be okay I told her that's all I could say and I'm not a doctor, like, but if you have your, like, my dad was inspirational to me because if I fell down, he would tell me to get back up and keep going. He would not let me fall down and feel sorry for myself. I've never, ever felt sorry for myself. Yes, I get shitty. I get really cranky with life and I hate life, but my dad's always told me to get back up on my horse and keep going. So this is all that I told this subscriber with a new baby that's got EB. They don't know what form it is yet, but um, I just said, look, when she falls down, pick her back up. If something goes wrong, deal with it then. Like, you have to go day by day. You can't plan out your life. You just have to take little steps each and every day. Like, I could die tomorrow, you could die tomorrow, anyone could die tomorrow, but you just have to keep pushing along and, yeah, be inspired by little things that you don't know, that, just be inspired, pretty much, like, yeah. Me and my dad have this motto where we say, every someone's always worse off than what I am, or than what we are. And that really is true. There's always someone out there that's totally a hundred, a million times worse off than what I am. And so I never dwell on the little things in life. I just like get on with it and yeah, I might have like bumps in the road where I'm like, I hate my life, FML. But you always have a light at the end of the tunnel and there's always something good that comes from bad and... Yeah, that's what we always say to each other. Or like, yeah, just think positive and everything will just work out for the best. I'm pretty sure that's what got me through my life was positive thinking. Like, my dad's never positive. When I ask him something, he's like, he always thinks of the most negative things of life. Oh my God, there goes a horse. Serious, a horse just rode past. That's random. Anyways, um, we live near the showground and people keep their horses there and they ride them up and down the street because they can. Weird. And there's my neighbour and my other neighbour. Oh my god, how embarrassing. 
Thank God they can't see me. Anyways, um, yeah, just positive thinking really helps people get through life. At the hardest of times, it just think positive. So to all the people out there that have suffered from EB, remember, I'll be your friend and I'm awesome. So if you ever want to talk or if you ever want advice on something, please let me know because I'm always available. I, I never leave my computer. Like, it's just my baby. Um, so yeah, if any person out there that suffers from EB, no matter what form of EB, Please let me know. And yes, from EB, my hands have contracted over time. Like this hand is sore at the moment. But my fingers have contracted because of my over time wear and tear, riding, um, blistering. It just doesn't mix. And that's why I have no fingers. I've had about four operations on this hand. I've had none on this one. <laughs> But I am thinking about having another operation in the future sometime. But it never lasts. Like, hand operations never last. Preventing your fingers from webbing at birth is the number one key to life. So, yeah. Um, I could go on and on about through the years. If you want to hear a through the years of my life, like different things that have happened health-wise, um, EB related, non-EB related, whatever. Please let me know. Leave a comment. I would love to share, like, personal experiences with you because I'm pretty awesome. If anyone has any questions about EB or epidemiologist below, so, or the butterfly girl, myself, um, please leave a comment below. But I would love to hear from you and your, like, point of view on life and how you think about life. Do you dwell on the little things or do you just, like, get on with life and think, oh, my God, there's someone worse off. Like, when someone, this is what really pisses me off, actually. I just want to tell you my pet peeves. Okay. When someone comes up to me and says, Oh my God, I've got this cut on my finger. I feel like saying, Hello, have you seen my hands lately? I've got about a million. I've got no fingers. And when, like, people stare, I know people are just curious about what's happened or what's wrong with me, like, that sort of stuff. I know people are just curious, but it, when people stare constantly, if I give them a smile or something, it's okay. But when I stare constantly, it really pisses me off, pretty much. Um, and, yeah, it's just like when people whinge about the littlest things, like, oh, my God, I've got this cut on my finger. Oh, my God, my back really hurts. Oh, my God. I think I've hurt my shoulder. Oh my god, like, shut up. That's all I can say. <laughs> just get over it. Have you seen me lately? Hello? But I just want to say, without you guys, I would be, like, so boring in life. Like I say in all my videos, I would be so boring without my YouTube. And my YouTube's on a slant because I am sitting on my bed doing this video because it's the best light and it's coming through the window. But, and I didn't want to film on my big camera because this wasn't really a HD, high definition video to make. Because you don't really want to look up my nose, do you? No. But, um, yeah, I just like, the only, YouTube is one of the best things that has oh, made me who I am today. And, made, like, I just say on my freaking videos. Without YouTube, I would be like, so boring, like, yeah, and everyone that comments on my videos, watches my videos, makes me smile from ear to ear, and it's awesome, I absolutely and remember, like please subscribe, it's free, and thumbs up this video, it truly make my day, because I love to, if I hold on the button, to inspire people to give them hope, to give them a reason to watch me. Anyway, I'll talk to you all later and I love you a lot and a lot and a lot. So until next time, have a fantastic hump day. Just today is Wednesday and it's Tuesday in America but it's now a Wednesday. But anyway, have an awesome rest of the week and I will talk to you all soon and I love you. Bye.